Fortnite Chapter 2 has completely rocked the boat and changed the competitive meta. We're talking new maps, new rotations, new loot pools, and that's just the start of it guys, but you already know this. Well, that is if you're grinding like we are. Now, the problem that I've been hearing a lot of you guys tell me is that it's hard to adapt your playstyle to what Chapter 2 is all about. You know, like your mind is stuck back at OG Fortnite's meta, and that makes sense. We've had 10 long seasons of Fortnite on the same map with generally the same meta, but now Chapter 2 is throwing all of that for a loop. Also, given that the Fortnite Championship Series is kicking off next week, now is the best time for us to talk about improving your game sense in Chapter 2. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Dan, and today we're going to be discussing all the essentials to make you a successful player in Chapter 2. But before we get into it, a lot of you guys were asking for a creator code, so we went ahead and made one. Be sure to use code PROGUIDES in the item shop when doing any kind of purchase to support your friendly ProGuides Fortnite team. If you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, then click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. If you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We strive to bring you the best content available. Alright, with all that being said, let's get into the video. In order to really get a good idea of how to change your game sense, we need to talk about how the meta has changed. Specifically, we need to realize how the previous meta is just not going to prepare you enough for Chapter 2. It's like we're going to break down Fortnite into two categories, before Chapter 2 and after Chapter 2. The biggest change that separates Season X from Chapter 2 is the mobility, or should I say, lack of. Back in Season X, we had all of these different mobility items. We're talking launch pads, shock waves, and even those bouncers towards the end of the season. We were literally in mobility heaven as Season X was wrapping up. But now, now everyone, that just ain't the case. We talked about how the loot pool was changed in a recent video, but the point is so important that we have to talk about it again. There is zero mobility, zilch, nada, not even a little bit. Now, I'm not going to argue whether it's a good or bad change, I'll let you do that in the comments down below. Regardless, this is what we are stuck with, and the best thing you can do to get better is relearn your strategies without having any mobility at all. And honestly guys, it really isn't as difficult as it seems. Like, think of mobility items as a get out of jail free card. Your opportunity to move somewhere quickly and it's a one time use. In a sticky spot, okay, you've got a shockwave to yeet you across the map. Team needs to get across to the safe zone, a launch pad will do you just fine. Only now, you don't get that luxury, it's all on foot now, and you're even more in control of your rotations. This means that you need to rotate earlier, even if you were already in the safe zone. If you were thinking ahead before, you're going to need to think two steps ahead now. Get going way earlier in anticipation to wherever you have to go. Take, for example, the zone before half in and half out. If you barely get into the zone and base up, thinking that's going to be enough, homeboy, I got some bad news for you. If the half zone pulls all the way across the map, you're absolutely done for. No way around it, dude. I know RNG sucks, and you could easily blame dying in this situation due to RNG. The thing is, though, there's an alternative solution. Rotate to center as early as possible. Do whatever you can to get yourself closest to the center of every zone. I don't care if we're talking about first zone or half zone, just do it. You never know when the zone is going to pull on the opposite side of the map and leave you with a huge rotation and dozens of eyes, grenades, and AR spam included. Yeah, yeah, rotating a dozen times per game sucks. Not to mention you're probably going to burn through a lot of materials making a new base every time. But this is a change that you must make if you want to even consider being successful in today's meta. Also, if you are taking competitive play seriously, making a bunch of new bases is literally not a problem because the Fortnite Championship Series is a squad playlist. You got four people holding 1500 mats each, do you really think you'll use all of them? And even if you do for some weird reason burn through 6000 mats, uh, go get a kill or two. I mean, it's not rocket science, guys. Last thing regarding the whole no mobility, if you hate this meta, just know that everyone else is dealing with the exact same thing. So get moving because you don't want to fall behind. Next up, we need to talk about your positioning and awareness of the surroundings. As we discussed in a previous video, link in the description by the way, the utility items got practically eliminated, except of course, grenades. This means that you won't ever be getting hit by stink bombs or anything like that, but you have a different thing to worry about, explosive spam. You guys know by now that grenades are legit everywhere, like every house or building has some nades chilling inside. Squads hoard the nades and chuck upwards of 40 at a base for an easy quad kill. You've probably seen pros get hit by it time and time again, or maybe just your favorite content creators. 
Take a look at our boy Tim the Tatman get pelted with 23 nades in under 30 seconds. Not fun at all. In front of me. Oh in front my of God. Me. I'm not complaining today. Everyone type a smile. We're gonna push the other side at the same time. South at the same time. I got one, I got one. I swear, when it happened to me yesterday, I just wanted to punch my monitor. Completely unrelated. Does anyone have a monitor for sale? Asking for a friend, of course. Kidding, kidding, but the thing about nade spam is that the team that sets it up relies on the fact that you're sitting in a box to get an accurate lineup. If you can get even a few seconds of heads up that someone is about to spam your base with explosives, the easiest counter is to move a bit. Take a look at Alithi and how he notices the grenade set up from opponents perched up somewhat close to them. He gets his teammates to disperse to the sides, and what do you know, a dozen grenades come crashing in and hits nobody. Two other things that we should note here. The first is you should notice that since they have a bit of high ground from the hill, it's much easier to take cover. Position yourself towards the side of the hill and use the incline for cover. Imagine having to run away from explosives on completely flat land. You're going to be a fish out of water. The other thing is that they decide to return some grenades at the opponents that were originally pestering them. Now, that's super important because if you don't let them know you ain't scared to tussle, they'll just continue bullying you. Let an annoying opponent know you won't get harassed by throwing grenades back, using AR spam, or landing a deadly heavy sniper sh- oh, wait, RIP the heavy sniper. If you get used to using your terrain in combination with awareness for when an opponent is about to toss nades at you, there's almost zero chance you will get killed by a utility item. On the flip side of things, having both no mobility and practically zero utility apart from nades in the current loot pool comes with an unintended side effect. The middle tarp is now OP. This one really makes more sense if you guys play end games in scrims or tournaments, but this is where you're going to get all of your points from placements and kills. So listen up, let's break this down piece by piece. First off, taking height early on is going to be absolutely devastating because RPGs and grenades are so common, everyone is going to be targeting height with it. Typically, high ground players will try to minigun, heavy snipe, or stink bomb the middle tarpers, but all of that is out of the game now. The only thing they can really do is chuck explosives back down at you. But remember how I said that in squads you have three other teammates with 1500 mats each? You can literally middle tunnel for every moving zone and not run out of mats, even if you don't kill anyone, which is almost never the case. This makes it super easy to keep your entire team alive for the entirety of endgame, which makes winning games much, much easier. Also, the no mobility thing makes taking high ground earlier much more difficult. First off, you can't use a launch pad or shockwave to take height anymore, so it's going to be a good old crank fest. But the other thing that people don't consider is what happens when you do take height early on. Well, if someone has an RPG and wants to blow up high ground, you have a really good chance of dying to fall damage. No shockwaves or launch pads or bouncers or anything else that can safely drop you dozens of stories without any fall damage, it's all gone, which makes height so much more risky early on. What do we suggest then? Taking high ground super late after successfully using the middle tunnel for a majority of endgame. Everyone on your team is going to be alive and healthy, not to mention we'll still have some mats to spare to get on height. A few of you will have RPGs and you'll be able to knock height out, and whoever is up there is no match for four 200 HP warriors. We used to suggest going for height often during the old meta because you will usually have something to catch your fall if you lose it. We don't have that safety net anymore, so you have to update your strategy to the changing meta. So what are you waiting for? Get to the creative servers and grind out those tunnels. Let's go over everything one more time. The biggest change to Fortnite Chapter 2 was removal of all mobility. Don't panic, just rotate early and frequently. Don't worry about materials, you got three teammates to cover you. Plus, everyone is dealing with that whole zero mobility thing as well, you're not in this alone. On your rotates, make sure to pick spots that leave you with elevation and room to dodge incoming explosive spam. Casting yourself close to a hill is your best bet, but as long as you aren't on completely flat land, you'll be doing alright. And finally, once you use this guide to actually make endgames consistently, make sure to make a middle tunnel and stick to it religiously. It's the safest place to be on the entire map right now, and high ground is so much more vulnerable. Wait a bit, keep your team healthy, and snag height at the last possible second for an easy victory royale. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you thought and what you'd like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Once again, it's your host Dan. You can find me at, at Daniel Lammerman, and we'll see you in the next one.